Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today we're going to cover Bible marking week nine, and the topic is state of the dead. So what happens when you die? And before we begin any study, I always like to go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of life today. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your holy word through inspired men. And I want to ask that you bless this study. I ask for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit uh, in my mind, in my heart, and the words that come out of my mouth. And I pray that this study helps people understand a very important topic in the Bible, um, that we are not immortal. We have a physical body that dies. And the Bible describes it as a sleep, as we'll see in these studies. And then um, our reward is when Jesus Christ comes. And I just pray um, that this study goes far and wide and helps many people. And I pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Our first scripture, and we've got 17 to cover. This is one of the longest studies that we do in the Bible marking series of 15 um, studies. So the state of the dead begins with John chapter 11 and was specifically verses 11 to 14. And the New King James Version of the Bible, which is what we read all of the studies in. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death. But they thought he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. And Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And so that's the end of that one. And our next scripture is going to be found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. As I pull that up, we have hundreds of spiritual messages at DanielParsonsMinistry.com. My wife, Patricia, is a gourmet vegan chef. She has hundreds of healthy, delicious vegan recipes. You can access them all at the Healthy Living tab at DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Please comment on your favorite recipes. We enjoy interacting with you. Thank you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. The comfort of Christ's coming. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds I'm sorry, I just, I'll just read this whole passage over again. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we, okay, that's all I have to read. So our next scripture is John chapter 5. And I'll pull that up. I want to specifically look at verses 28 and 29. So do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So now we want to look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And that's the first scripture at, in the Bible that deals with death. So Genesis 2, and we want to look at verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. So that shows us where life came from, the breath of life, when God breathed into his nostrils. 
So now we want to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 for our next scripture. As I do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have a very large channel. You can find it at Daniel Parsons Ministry if you search for that on YouTube. And please subscribe. I appreciate it. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. So that's a, a good follow-up to the Genesis 2 scripture. Now we want to go to Psalm 146. The Bible never contradicts itself, my friends. Um, it doesn't say one thing in one area and then another in another. It always um, makes perfect sense. Do not put your trust in princes. We're going to look at verses 3 and 4, Psalm 146, verses 3 and 4. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. And that very day, his plans perish. Okay. So 1 Timothy chapter 6 is our next scripture. And I'll pull that up. So 1 Timothy chapter 6. And we want to look specifically at verse 16. So 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16. Who alone has immortality dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. And it's talking about Jesus is the only one that has immortality. Romans 2 is where our next scripture is located. And you can find all of these um, Bible marking post on my blog also at Daniel Parsons Ministry. Um, I've put a, a little link at the top of the menu, um, Bible, and just click on that and you'll get all of these studies. Romans chapter 2 and verse 7. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory honor and immortality, but to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth. Oops, I went too far. Um, we only wanted to deal with eternal life to those who by patient continuance and doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 15 is where our next scripture is. And we want to specifically look at verses 51 to 54. So 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 to 54. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible is put on incorruption and this mortal is put on immortality, then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Now we want to go to Psalm 115. And I'll pull that up for you right now. And we want to look at verse 17. So Psalm 115 in verse 17, the dead do not praise the Lord, nor any who go down into silence. Now Acts 2 is where our next scripture is located. And let's go to verse 34. Acts 2, verse 34, for David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. So now Ecclesiastes 9 is where our next scripture is located. And 
And we want to look at verse five. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing, and they have no more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Now, Job chapter 19. I think the book of Job was put there by God so that every single human being, when they struggle, can look and see what happened to this man, how he lost everything. His wife cursed him to die, and he never, never left his heart for the Lord. He never quit praising the Lord, even in his struggles. So Job chapter 19, verses 25 to 27 is what we're going to read. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another, how my heart yearns within me. Now Ezekiel chapter 18 for our next passage. We're getting close to the end, so be patient with me here. And we want to specifically look at chapter or verse 4. Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Okay, Romans 6, verse 23 is our next scripture. And we want to look at verse 23. So Romans 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So now just two more scriptures. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Oops. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself toward godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And so now our last scripture is in Revelation chapter 22. And it's the last chapter in the Bible. And Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And that's the end of today's scripture reading, my friends. God bless you until we're together again. Bye for now.